So now that we understand a little bit about the basics of what makes up an assembly name, we're going to pick these all apart one by one. I'm going to bring up the command prompt again and prove to you that main class is still the only file that is in our directory. What I want to do is create a library file and then consume it from another file. We've seen this in previous videos. Hopefully this will be a refresher. I'm going to make a public class cow with a, let's make it static this time, public static void moo method like that, console right line moo like so, save that, bring this back up here, I'm going to say C sharp compiler please create a library and the out file I want it to call farm dot dll and the input file will be main class dot cs, hit enter Compiler grinds for a minute, lists the contents of the directory, and we see we have farm.dll. I'm going to run Eldasm on farm as we've done on previous uh, videos. We'll dump the contents out to moo.txt and farm.dll. Hit enter, open up moo.txt, look at it. I'm looking for the assembly manifest. We've talked about manifests and how manifests tell the initial information, the identity information, especially about an assembly. We see here, here is the manifest. Its name is farm. It is not farm.dll. Again, .NET does not care about the file extension. The only time the file extension is used is when we're locating an assembly. But at that point, assemblies are identified by just their basic name. We can also see here that this farm has a version. It's version 0000. It must be the first re release of the farm. Since I did not explicitly identify an assembly version, then the default version is 00. Now I don't see a public key token in here, so our public key token is null. Uh, you can see we're referencing another assembly, though, that has a public key token, but that has nothing to do with ours, and we'll talk about public key tokens later. And the version is also, uh, or not the version, the culture is also neutral. We'll get into all those things later. For now, I just want to talk about this very basic name. Let's write some code to compile against our library. I'm going to comment this out just for reference, and let's make a class. I'll call it my main class static void main and in here I'm going to say cow dot moo and again inside of our farm dot dll moo is public and cow is public so we should be able to access that outside here I'm going to save this file come back to our command line let's clear it off and list the contents of our directory in fact I'm gonna get rid of all the moo stuff just to not, not dirt, I wanted to delete it, sorry, move, start, so I want to, just, I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible. So now we have main class.cs with the simple main, and our farm.dll, which was compiled with this code in here. C sharp compiler, please, reference uh, the farm.dll, and again, the .dll is only so I can identify a file on my hard drive, and it really has nothing else to do with .NET. Uh, the input file will be main class.cs. The compiler grinds. Compiler's happy. Let's list the contents of the directory. We see we have an executable here. Let's run main class.exe. We have a moo. That works out fine and dandy. Now, let's say in a very bad situation that another vendor or another program or something comes around and wants to install itself somehow in the same directory as me C sharp code, and they also have a farm.dll that they, they wish to install. Well, if they install their farm.dll, they're going to overwrite my farm.dll, but it's, it's purely possible. I think we're done with this. Okay, and let's say, let's change up the farm here a little bit. Let's say instead of having a cow class, they're going to have a chicken. Okay, a chicken class, and chickens, they make that bagok sound. I don't know how to, uh, just, uh, just, how about make sound? I don't know how to spell that. And, I'm, and then down here I'm going to say uh, a chicken sound. Chicken sound, like so. And let's just say, hey, C-sharp compiler, again, let's make a library. Uh, we'll call it farm.dll, 
And it's from the, not chicken, it's from main class.cs, this code file here. Now when I do this, the compiler is going to overwrite this farm DLL we created with the cow. We're going to stomp on somebody else's DLL. If I hit enter, compiler grinds, compiler's happy. But now let's think about what's going on here. We have this EXE that we compiled against the old farm, and the old farm had a cow in it. But we just replaced that cow with a chicken, and if we had disassembled the new farm, let me just uh, list the contents of the directory, clear the screen, list the contents of the directory. The farm DLL is there now, but it has chicken in there. Right? And its name, its assembly name, let's do it, ildasm slash out moo.txt farm.dll uh, moo.txt, let's look at moo.txt. Oh, look, the assembly name is identical to the one we had before. It's also called farm. And the version is identical. Ah, what headache. What headache. Our assembly name, our assembly version, our assembly basic name, and our assembly versions are identical. And then what's even worse is our old farm.dll is gone. So let's run main class .exe. And when I run it, it's going to look for the farm assembly. And it will find the farm assembly. It's right here. And that assembly has to have version 0, which it is. And culture neutral, which it is. Public key token will be null. All that stuff for sure. Oh, what an issue. Let's see what happens. Main class .exe. We get an exception. Program blows up. It says, hey, uh, uh, I'm trying to load a type cow. I found the assembly farm. Okay, the version was zero, culture neutral, public key token null. It, I found the right assembly, but I, uh, there wasn't a cow in there. There wasn't a cow in there. If you've ever heard of DLL hell, this is what you're seeing. We just installed an assembly or a DLL file over another DLL file. Not cool, okay, not cool. And so just having assemblies identified by their names, yeah, we can do it. We generally do do it. It's It, it, it works. But uh, if we're trying to work with multiple assemblies, which could have the same assembly name as we do in this case, well, we can't have the files in the same location. That's a problem. And then we need to also uniquely identify them a little bit differently, and that, that's where the public key token comes in. Now this error is different than what I would get if the farm DLL didn't exist. Let me erase farm.dll and then I'm going to say main class dot exe. We still get an error but the error is different. Okay now .net's complaining saying I can't find the assembly. Here it found the assembly, it just couldn't find the the cow type inside of the assembly. And here it's just saying I, 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 I can't find it. I can't find it. Well, we could recreate it, couldn't we? We could say cow, and what did we have? Moo here. I'm going to leave this as chicken sound. And I'm going to use the up arrow just to get my uh, command. C sharp compiler, target a library here, make a form. .dl. Okay, let's do all that. And then a uh, main class.exe, and it runs just fine again, but now it's making the chicken sound. But this is a, this is kind of the cool part about dynamic linking is is .NET, all .NET's concerned about is that it compiled against a farm assembly version 0, public key token null, culture was neutral. Right? And it, our, our new farm here, let me clear the screen and list the contents of the directory. This farm assembly, all of those four attributes of an assembly name are true. So .NET at runtime, it just said, okay, I'm looking for, oh, I found it. Let's use this assembly. Oh, there's a cow inside of it. Very good. There's a moo. I can use all of that. All right, so anyway, we're going we're gonna to pick apart these assemblies more. We're going to see how to solve the problem of DLL hell and stomping on each other and that kind of thing.